Hi, I'm Mr. Simons, and we're going to continue with our discussion about market equilibrium. So uh, the previous video was an introduction to market equilibrium. It really looked at what market equilibrium is and what the price mechanism is. These are very important concepts. So if you haven't watched that video yet, maybe you want to start there. What we're going to do in this video is we're going to talk about how do we establish market equilibrium? Let's say that we start from a point where there is no market equilibrium, where there is disequilibrium. How does the market then establish equilibrium from that point? So we're gonna look in detail at two scenarios. The first scenario is where demand exceeds supply. And then the second situation is where supply exceeds demand. So what we'll do is we'll go through each situation, take a look at how does it work? And then how does the market get back to equilibrium? And also just before we get into it, that that situation of equilibrium that we talk about as economists, that occurs when quantity demanded is equal to quantity supplied. If we are not at that point A or whatever letter you might wanna give it, we are at disequilibrium. So let's start with a situation of disequilibrium known as excess demand. So when we're talking about excess demand, we're talking about that the amount of goods and services that consumers demand that they want and are able to pay for is greater than the amount being supplied by firms. So a good way to think about this is say you go to the movies and you really wanna see, I don't know, the latest Frozen movie. By the time you're watching this, we could be up to Frozen 11, which is probably gonna be called Olaf's Revenge. But when you go to the movie, there are no tickets left. So quantity demanded has exceeded quantity supplied. We're not at equilibrium. Or let's say you go to the shops and you're like, oh, I just would really like a new pair of Yeezys, please. And you go there and quantity demanded has exceeded quantity supplied because they're sold out. That's a good way of thinking about excess demand. Excess demand occurs in the real world when things are sold out. There is insufficient supply. And we'll have a look at what excess demand looks like and then how does the market reestablish equilibrium? Okay, so what we'll do is we'll look at this situation of excess demand. And so remember that our focus at the moment is this idea of disequilibrium, of not being at equilibrium. From the previous uh, section, what we can identify is that this is a situation where quantity demanded will exceed quantity supplied. So we're not having those two terms equal. In fact, it is unequal, hence our situation of disequilibrium. So what we'll do is we'll create this like we usually do. So that's P, that's zero, that's quantity. And in this case, just to remind ourselves, yes, we are going to be looking at supply and demand on that quantity axis. So let's include our supply and demand curves. Okay, so we've got our supply and demand curves and we've got our equilibrium point at A. So what I'll do is I'll just show um, where we have that we've got our price equilibrium and that if we scroll down here, we've got our quantity equilibrium. And just to remind ourselves, I'll just put this over here, that at QE, it is a situation where QS equals QD. So point A is equilibrium. But when we're looking at this situation here, we are not going to be at equilibrium. We've got a situation of excess demand. So I'll grab a different color pen. We'll do this one in black. And so let's say that we've got a different price out there in the market. Okay, I don't know why I've drawn that with an arrow end. Please don't worry about that part. But let's say that this price here is P1. And you can see now that when we intersect with P1, that when we intersect at quantity supplied or quantity demanded, those values aren't the same. So let me show you what I mean. So if I've created here points B and point B, so <laughs> point B and point C, can you see that point B occurs on the blue line and the blue line represents supply? So what we can say is that point B will equal quantity supplied. And that if we look at point C, 
can you see that point C occurs on the green line and that represents demand? So C equals quantity demanded. And all of this occurs at, little at symbol, price one. And what we can also see is that, oh, it's interesting, price one is actually below price equilibrium. It's cheaper than the equilibrium price. So here's what I'll do. I'll um, match up these points. So I know that B, oh, that's quantity supplied. Okay, so that's Q, S, and C, green line. Oh, that's quantity demanded. Okay, so here that's Q, D. So again, I may be a little bit confused at this point. So what I'll do is I'll grab a different colored pen. Let's say red. Red is always fun. So that I can say, okay, this is point zero. Let me put some imaginary numbers. So let's say that quantity equilibrium is 10 units right? That's where quantity demanded equals quantity supplied. If quantity supplied is closer to zero, oh, that's got to be less than 10. So let's just imagine that that represents five on our, on our example. And that let's say that quantity demanded, that's going to be larger than 10, further away from zero. So let's say that that is 15 units. Okay, that's 15 units. So what we can say here is that at price one, right, quantity demanded equals 15. This isn't a dividing line. It's just separating these two ideas. Quantity demanded equals 15. Quantity supplied equals five. Therefore, at price one, we have excess demand. Demand is greater than supply. So we're in disequilibrium. The market is not equal. Things are not um, at point A because the price is lower. That essentially what we're saying is that at this lower price, more people want the goods and services than suppliers are willing to produce. There's excess demand, too much demand. So what we're thinking about is how do we get from B and C to go back to equilibrium? How do we reestablish equilibrium in this market? So a couple of things will happen and I'll put this in black to talk us through it. So what we might say at the moment is that the first thing that could happen, so the first thing that could happen is that when consumers don't have the goods and services they want, that what consumers might do is they might say, I'll pay a bit more to get it because I really want it and there's not enough. So I might offer higher prices, right? I might say, I'll pay a little bit more, five bucks, 10 bucks, whatever, more. And then what we might say is that as price goes up, producers might expand the amount that they produce. And the reason that I use the word expand and not increase is because it is, <laughs> is, because it is motivated by a change in price, not a change in another factor. So what we're seeing is that, okay, price is going to go up, producers are going to expand supply, but also we know as a kind of third idea as price goes up in this process, actually not all consumers are going to be able to afford it and they might demand less so that as price goes up, demand could contract in this market and not decrease because it is motivated by a change in price. So let's see what this could look like on the graph, these three steps. So what we're saying is that, okay, price is, is going to be up because consumers are going to bid it up. They're going to bid up the price so that they can get some of that limited stock. So what we could see on this side, that that arrow, is that actually demand could contract because as the price goes up, consumers are going to want less generally. But at the same time, if we're looking at the blue supply line, as price is going up, actually firms are going to want to produce more to make more revenue. So what we can say is that on these situations here is that this arrow represents event two and that this arrow represents event three and that what we will do is we will head up towards point A and we will get back to a position of market equilibrium. So the process that we've seen here is that we have gone from excess demand, so let's put this over here, that what we've gone is from um, being at price one and points B and C, excess demand, and we have gone from there to returning to equilibrium at point A, where quantity demanded is equal to quantity supplied.
quantity demand is equal to quantity supplied. And remember that the previous situation is actually that the way a quantity demanded is greater than quantity supplied. So these are the, the steps here that are involved in the process. I'll just go over it very quickly. Um, you can always skip ahead if you've got it by now. So one more time. So when we start at disequilibrium, there's excess demand that consumers will offer higher prices because they don't want to miss out, right? They want this good and service, but there's not enough of them. As price goes up, that's a signal telling producers you should really expand supply because um, there's too much demand and you can make some extra money. But then as price goes up at the same time, not all consumers are going to be able to afford it because it's more expensive and demand could contract. So that level of demand could shrink and that we will return to point A and a situation of equilibrium. So excess supply is where quantity supplied exceeds quantity demanded. So one way to think about it is that you go to the store and there's just a whole bunch of t-shirts there. Maybe it's, I don't know, t-shirts for a sports team that didn't go so well or something like that, a brand that people no longer are excited about. So that there's this pile of t-shirts and the store can't get rid of them. So that the amount produced, that quantity supplied, is exceeding quantity demanded, how much consumers actually want. So whenever you see like an overstock clearance or, you know, we've got too much stock, everything has to go, that that is an example of excess supply, that the producers have made a little bit or a large bit of a mistake and they've produced too much at that price for the market. So we're at a position of disequilibrium, quantity supplied exceeds quantity demanded. And then let's now go to the whiteboard and take a look at how the market will then re-establish equilibrium. Okay, so I hope you don't mind, but I've skipped ahead slightly, put in all the curves and um, drawn up market equilibrium. So A is our point of equilibrium, just like it was in the other situation. What we're looking at here is another situation of disequilibrium, so things not being equal in the market. But what we're going to look at is excess supply rather than excess demand. So what we're saying is that rather than having this situation, we're not going to look at where we start with equilibrium. We're going to start with a situation where quantity supplied exceeds quantity demanded. So actually firms are producing more goods and services than consumers actually want. So what we'll do is we'll draw this all in black. And so we will create our situation. So, so what we've got is we've got this extra line. It goes on a little bit long. Let's just get rid of this bit here. Looks amazing. So then what we'll do is we'll go back to our black pen. And what we're going to say is that in this example, this is P1. So this is the equilibrium price for when this situation occurs, but we're looking at a different situation. So what I've got at P1 is a couple of things that I can already identify. The first thing is that it is more expensive than the equilibrium price. It is a higher price. We are getting further away from zero. And that while at PE, QD and QS were equal, green and blue lines were, that actually at P1, it's different. So I've got B here and I've got C here. And again, the colors might be helpful in trying to help us understand it here. So if I look at point B, I'm looking at where it intersects. I'm like, oh, okay, so that, that goes with quantity demanded. So if I look at point, so we're saying at point one, at price one, let's just slow it down a little bit here. So at price one, what I've got is I get point B, which equals quantity demanded. And I'll just create that here, QD. And in case it's not clear, the reason why it's QD is I'm looking at where does the price intersect with demand? Oh, it intersects at point B. That's QD. And then if I go over to the blue curve, the supply curve, if I can do with point C, that at P1 still, we get point C, which equals quantity supplied. 
And what I'll do is I'll get the red pen, just put some numbers to help us understand what's going on. So zero, which obviously represents zero. Let's say that quantity equilibrium in our example is 10 units. So I know that QD is smaller than 10 because it's closer to zero. So let's say that quantity demanded is five. Just remember I'm making up these numbers just to prove a point in this example. And then I know that QS is larger than 10. So this will sit 15 over here. So what I can say is that at price one, not PE, at price one, quantity supplied is greater than quantity demanded because my numbers of 15 exceed that number of five. So I've got excess supply. We've got too much product out there in the market that consumers don't really want it. So then we can think about, well, what happens if we're looking at how do we go from B and C to get back to equilibrium? What are the steps that are actually involved? Okay, so I decided to type it this time to make it a little bit easier to read. So let's have a look at these um, steps. So we're starting with excess supply. So the products sit on the shelves, right? That there's not enough demand to buy all those products. So what happens is that producers will reduce the price to encourage sales, that they're offering discounts. And you might think of that where you go to a clearance sale or an overstock sale. So the producers are offering discounts to try and get rid of the product at a lower price that consumers will want more. That's that law of demand. So demand will expand. As the price falls, consumers will want more. So demand will expand and it's expand, not increase because it's related to price. But at the same time, what I'd like you to think about is that at a lower price, so as the price is falling, other producers will wish to supply less because they're making less revenue at that lower price. So that supply contracts for other producers because they're not interested in supplying as much at a lower price. So if we return to the graph, and let's um, just put this in red so it'd be easier to see. So we're looking at this process. So what happens is that if we look at demand, actually as the price falls, demand will expand. And that this is an expansion of demand because you can see that if I'm going from QD to QE, if I'm going from 5 to 10, that's a, a larger number. So that here, demand will expand. So we can say that that relates to step two in our examples up here. But as price starts to fall, as some suppliers are doing that discounting process, that other suppliers will wish to supply less. So that supply will contract and that this is that step three in that discussion. So that through all of this process, right, that we will go from disequilibrium to equilibrium. That through these three steps, we will go from B and C to point A. So what I'm saying here is that starting from points B and C, which relates to P1, that we will move to point A and we will establish market equilibrium at that point because B and C they represent disequilibrium. Okay, so in this video, we've had a good look at what happens uh, when you start from disequilibrium in a market. How is equilibrium then established? So we've looked at two situations where there's excess demand, where things are sold out, and where there's excess supply, when producers have got too much stock or inventory on their hands and have to lower the price to try and get consumers to buy that excess supply and return to equilibrium. It's very important that you can draw and explain both scenarios. This is a sort of an area of content that comes up quite a bit in terms of economics. So you need to be pretty cluey about this situation. Questions or comments, put them in the comments. We'd be very happy to help you along with your economics journey. And as always, Thank you very much for watching.